This is what we have to do before we go in the water. I'm gonna pull him off the boat. Guys, we've spent how many hours working in this spot here? Jim! Hey! So now we got this bad boy in here. This thing is, I can't hear a single noise. Uh, we've got something wrapped around the prop. About 10 minutes into our uh, splash. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? Morning everyone. I've hardly slept. I'm too excited, anxious. Look how insanely good Parley looks. Oh, I haven't seen her look that good in so long. So I'm just taking the dogs for their last walk from the dry dock. We hauled out nearly 11 months ago. They took us out right here and they plonked us on those pylons right there. So it's been a freaking roller coaster, guys. I'm still very uh, nervous. There's still a lot of things to do and still a lot of stuff to check. It's weird. You, you wish for this day to come and come and come. And when it's finally here, it's all just kind of a little bit too overwhelming to be as excited as I thought I'd be. The excitement's going to be when we're actually out there, anchored up, cold beer in my hand. And that's the moment where I'll say, okay, we did it. So there's still a lot to do this morning. Got a long list of stuff to get on with. Jim's going to be bringing that thing around at 9 o'clock. And we'll lift her up finally those pylons that it's been sitting on. This is the work list. This is what we have to do before we go in the water. Sail drive oil. The, the sail drive's got no oil in them. Take all the shit to the container. That's all of that stuff. You can just get out of here. Put the cushions out. A couple of anti-foul touch-ups. We're going to expose the bulkhead, so we're going to take the trim off so that we can um, just listen and watch what's going on as the boat goes in the water. See how much it's bending and moving and creaking and groaning. Install the ladder so that we can get on and off the boat when we go out there today. Put the depth sounder in. Get the turnbuckles moving so the shrouds are completely loose right now. Just a couple of small things. We got two hours. Let's go! Let's do it! <laughs> <laughs> Flash day. It's really cool. Yeah. You can't use it. Oh, man. Um, so we're just filling up the sail drive with oil and then we're just running the engine. Two things to make sure that they're going to start nicely when we're in the water. And also spin that sail drive all around inside the sail drive and then we'll check the level again to make sure. And um, so we're doing multiple checks. So the, the biggest mistake that people make with these sail drives is to overfill them. Just take the cap and you just dip it in you don't screw it down you just dip it in and you want the oil level to be on that lower mark there oh shit that's way too much where are you coming from let's see two flights one three hour drive into the jungle and uh, a night in the car because i can never make that drive <laughs> Did after you sleep a flight. In the car? yeah man and this is his car by the way it's not like a big suv or anything you can actually sleep in it's like a tiny little what do you call what do you even call one of those it's a picanto <laughs> So the only thing you have to do guys if you want to run your engines in the dry dock is just give it some water and what that does is just lubricates the impeller for the raw water pump otherwise if you just start it dry the rubber veins on that impeller will just burn out within like a couple of minutes so you just stick a hose in the inlet or we put it in the strainer which feeds the engine and then now it's getting cooled, it's getting lubricated. This I could run this engine all morning like this. Um, engine's running great. 
Sail drives are going in and out of gear. We're going to check the sail drive oil one more time and we're good to go. Those marks? Yeah. 18 mil. Gonna pass this now. <laughs> yeah, I just need a slightly bigger drill bit though. It's, everything. it's always the case. Like a small job, it should just take 10 minutes. On a boat, always takes an hour, maybe two hours. The job doesn't take long, but then finding everything you need. Yeah. <laughs> My friend Tom. Now we can swim. This is this is the Rain Marine depth sounder. This is obviously going straight into the ocean. As the, the water passes that, it gives us the speed. So you have to understand that that doesn't necessarily mean the speed you are going. So if there's a three knot current against you, this is gonna read three knots more than you're actually moving. So we just followed the instructions from Ray Marine. They said to anti-foul this area, which makes sense because barnacles do tend to grow on that and um, seize this thing up a little bit. So we've, we've, we've anti-fouled that, we've anti-fouled the bottom of there, and I'm gonna install it with some silicon grease that they've supplied. And then we're gonna put this mousing wire on it to make sure that this can't unturn. It's gonna put plenty of grease on there. Why not, huh? This is silicone grease, it's not petroleum jelly or something like that. These O-rings stop the ocean from coming into the boat, so very important. I'm just gonna put some in the actual housing as well. One seals the top and one seals the bottom. Cool. Down she goes, and there's an arrow facing forward so that the little paddle wheel spins the right way. This. What I'm gonna do is the old one, surprisingly, was still working after the lightning. So I'm gonna keep it down here and it can double as a bung in case this one cracks and starts to leak. We'll just jam this one in there. So I don't need to keep the bung, this one, this spare paddle wheel can be our bung. I don't see why that's not a problem. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take off the name on the side of the boat that says Lagoon 450. Woo! Changing the name, baby. So, the way we straighten the boat was we put the pylons underneath the bridge deck, and then we loosen the shrouds and let the weight of the hulls straighten the boat on their own. And then we fixed all the bulkheads, basically every single bulkhead and frame with, with glass to the hull now. But the shrouds are still loose. It's not like the mast is going to fall down, but we are going to go for a little bit of a sea trial here. So we'll just we'll just take the slack up on these a little bit, and then the rigger slash surveyor is coming on Tuesday, tomorrow. So he's going to he's going to tune the rig. So I just want to get it tight enough, just not to so it doesn't want to pump or or flog around at all. But the problem with this boat is that these are so old that they're really, really hard to turn. We had to heat them up. It was a nightmare. So we're just gonna try and get them moving now. That was easy. So the key to all of this is to keep this part not spinning. So turning all of this is fine, but we don't wanna start um, tensioning up this cable. I'm gonna pull too hard and fucking <laughs> fall over or something. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Maybe go this side? Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> I'm gonna pull him off the boat. <laughs> Two, three. Okay, that one sees. Damn. One, two, three. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Travel lifters on its way out. We'll just get this to the container. Get this stuff out of here for now. to take the weight of the boat. So the slings are in place, we've got some plastic around there. As soon as we lift up, we're gonna be just hanging and we'll knock those pylons over. Okay, cool, Ben, now we're hanging on the slings. Perfect, no noise, nothing. That looks spent. How many hours working in this spot 
here. Look how worn down it is. All the fucking ground is all beat up. We've just been walking in and out of there. Going in, man. Check these bulkheads, we don't want to be listening for any creaks, moans, groans. I remember this cabin here was just screaming at us because there was a crack all the way through this bulkhead here. So now we've got this bad boy in here. This thing is, I can't hear a single noise. That thing is not leaking at all. This was the worry because it it's a three inch through hole. We keep checking it in case any water is seeping in, but I'm really confident with the job that we did. Okay, now we are going to check. The engine rooms, there's another big hot spot for leaks. So if there was any water coming in there, we would see it. The underwater lights that we installed, that's the cable coming up. No leaks, we still have to wire it all up. Fire up these engines. Fuck yes! Started perfectly. Put the navigation on, fridge on. So one of our Patreons, Stephen McLeod, gave us a little lump sum of money to have a nice celebration once we're in the water, which is now. So I'm going to go get ice and beer and we're going to go. shock or something. I can't fucking, I don't know what I'm looking at. something wrapped around the prop about 10 minutes into our uh, splash Ben ah oh, we got this big rubbish sack or something caught around the prop we could feel it as we were cruising That'll do it. Another reason why we don't pollute the ocean. No damage was done. Keep an eye on the oil level. Because it went right in. And there's this, the new seals that I just put in yesterday. Where's my beer? <laughs> <laughs> Just another example of pollution around Panama, man. It's big, black, rubbish bag. We felt it. Yeah, yeah. We felt the whole boat go like, shudder a little bit. And the bag wrapped right up between the prop and the housing. Silvia is missing. Big kiss to Silvia. We think of you. We miss you. I drink for you. Can I go to the beach?
So I know a lot of you were probably wondering how I'm feeling right now. It's as though it is not reality. Um, we're out here at Anchor on Parley. We've been looking at dirt for the last 10 months and everyone is just having such a good time. To see some of the younger crew like Lindsay and Abby and stuff, they're very, very young and they haven't experienced this type of thing before. And to see the amount of joy and excitement that they're getting right now has made the last 10 months so worth it. I get to relive the excitement that I had when I first experienced this. And just to see the smile on their faces, everyone's dancing, having a good time. It's just such a pleasure to be a part of that. And I honestly couldn't have asked for a better group of people to, to help launch this boat. It's been a really, really special moment. But it doesn't come with out a little bit of sadness. Sylvia has been living on this boat on and off for the last 10 months. She was actually filming the day we hauled out Parley. I needed someone to hold the camera and I asked her to do it. This was before we got together. And she watched Parley come out of the water and into the spot where we lived for the next 10 months. Due to a set of extremely unfortunate circumstances, she is not able to be here with us. And I feel so badly for her because she wanted this so much. Um, but I guess that's just the way life goes sometimes and it's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, she's in Italy, she's messaging saying that she's here in spirit and we can feel it. You know, it's, it's mixed emotions right now, but the joy and satisfaction that I feel right now being on Parley anchored is, uh, yeah, it's hard to find the words to be honest with you. <sighs> You guys are the crispy buns. <laughs> wow. Autopilot's working. Sales working. That is not a burner. Whoever tied that can buy a box of beer. <laughs> okay. You know how to do a clovage? I think so. She just learned that. <laughs> Oh, I see, I see you got it. When you do play here, yeah. there you go. Yes, the, fat the way I taught her, so you leave a little here, because then when you want to release it quick, you just pull this tab and you're done. Learned something today. What did you learn, Steph? What's the fenders called? and how to tie it up. I forgot the word. Clovage. Clovage. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say a huge thank you the Parlay crew in particular. Uh, you guys have been absolutely phenomenal, every single one of you. Um, this is really new for some of you and some of you have done this before, but uh, we've just come together as a team, Carlos included, and we've smashed this out and we're floating and it's the most amazing feeling. Honestly, thank you so much. Um, but one person you guys may not know is uh, Jamie, who was uh, on the boat for like nearly, nearly three years. He did a big refit on the boat in Guatemala and then he helped us get this boat straightened out. The bulkheads were snapped, you guys know the story. And uh, in honor of Jamie, who honestly just put his heart and soul into this boat, not to discredit anything that you guys have done, but he's just been there for a long time. Uh, so this is what I wanted to do for him. This is no longer a Lagoon 450, it's now a Jamie 465. We extended the boat and he helped straighten the boat and he's been a massive part of this so you don't know him but let's have a drink to Jamie and Woo! Yeah, Jamie! And of course the patron. We've got one patron here who came along. Thanks James. Yeah, we had a good time today. Was really good. appreciate, really appreciate you, James. Yeah, it was... well, we're... It's you guys that honestly keep this channel moving and keep us motivated and everything like that. So uh Yes! Man. No, seriously, thank you all so much. Honestly, it means the world to me. 
<laughs> now we're sailing. <laughs> It's a, it's a surreal moment, it really is. It's hard to describe what I'm feeling right now because it's been such a roller coaster. We've been, we've been on the hard for 10 months working, fixing these bulkheads and all that. So when you, when you own a boat and, and it goes in the water after a yard period, the emotions that you're going through are sort of anxiety. You're just, you're just trying to hope that nothing is leaking. You're just trying to hope that those, um, all of that work that you put into the boat is not gonna fail. That's not a very enjoyable moment. The moment that it hits the water is very frightening, to be honest with you. And then when you find that there's no leaks and everything is okay, there's just this huge relief. And that's when I started to finally realize that we had done it. And so the excitement levels were super high. And when we come out of here and we started cruising out towards Isla Grande, it was just, it was honestly like a dream. It was, it was, almost too good to be true because you hope for this day to come and then when it finally arrives it's just like overwhelming so i'm struggling for words here guys i don't know how to describe it but I promise you it is the most amazing feeling and i'm just there's just so much gratitude in my heart for everyone that's been involved in this and uh to be here in the water floating with friends is an incredible feeling and I'll be forever grateful for everyone that helped us get here. So what happens right now? Well, we're in the marina. Everyone's gone off to have showers, have some food, get ready. It's just me and Jake on the boat just chilling out. This is the calm before the storm because we deserve a big blowout. So we're going to party. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Your support means the world to us. Thank you for following. Thank you for commenting. Your comments are just encouragement for us to keep going. We have so many exciting things coming up. We're going sandblast and then we're going through the Panama Canal and we're going into the Pacific Ocean. So it's happening, guys. It's been a journey, but we're here. And this is the beginning of the next chapter. Love you guys.